I was so angry with that Uber driver that the, the first thing that came out of my mouth was, are you on effing crack? <laughs> <laughs> How did you get into cars? Oh, let's oh, start with topic. you, Alex. I um, opened the door and I sat in it. Oh, I uh, see. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. He's, he's yeah. trying to be funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I'm going to assume that shortly after that, he had to move the seat very far oh, forward. <laughs> well, I was going to say, he would have had to take a leap into it as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Rory, because you're so tall, aren't you? It, Alex, Alex, it doesn't matter because I'm taller than you. Yeah. <laughs> Your waistline well, will always be hard. bigger as well. Oh, um, oh how dare right. you? Right. Anyway, uh, how did I get into cars? I, I'm a firm believer in it's something you're kind of born with. I think... Um, Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> that's, Maybe that's it's Josh, Maybelline. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think you're born into liking things, being predisposed to like things, not like things. And um, I also find that you either like cars or football. It's very rare that you meet someone who likes cars and football. So I am a car lover. I did enjoy playing football when I was younger, but I've never been a follower of football. But um, I just always remember liking cars, being quite obsessed, being in my mum's E21, driving sorry, around. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. just gonna have to pause yeah. you there for a second. Yeah. So Taylor, yeah. We, we are on camera. Yeah. And you have just spent the last five minutes on your phone. <laughs> I sent one text. <laughs> It's all right. He's not driving though. But if we're we're on a podcast. Stop texting. I'm still listening. What did I say? What's the last thing I said? Uh, you said that your mum was in your E20. You were in yeah, your E20. Yeah, yeah. My mum was in my oh, E21 no, no, no. when you I was three in years your old. Yeah, one. And you used to play <laughs> football and you were into yeah, cars, but right. you can't be into both. Okay. So my mum used to have an E21 BMW. It had a massive, massive rust hole um, right where my feet were as a as a youngster. It was fantastic. And, Wait, um, uh, sorry. What? At this point, the car must have been new because you're really old. Shut up. How no, did it, it have a have a rust hole in it? It was an old car. It was um. Well, mum brought it over from Germany. So was, was this one of those ones where well? you have to like put a little handle in the front of it and then yeah like, crank it? it like, I used to have to crank, crank it. Like, yeah. oh, yeah. So you yeah, had a BMW yeah. 505, I see. Yeah, 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 1902. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, we used to call it E21. So yeah, back in the uh, oh, early okay. 1900s. Oh. Um, okay, we're actually going to pull off into a, into a parking spot in 800 meters because we are having a breakdown. Anyway, driving around in Mum's E21, and I always used to look at cars and point them out and say, "Oh, that's a Granada." Oh, that's a Sierra. Oh, that's a BMW. And mum would always just encourage that and help me and tell me if I was wrong or not. And then maybe when I was seven or eight, it got to the point where I knew uh, more about cars than mum did. And um, and there used to be a program with that man. Um, what's his name? Jeremy Clarkson. No, 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 not Top Gear. Um, the one where... So there was a program in the 90s where kids would go onto the program and then show off their skills. And mum wanted to enter me to be one of those kids and my skill would have been uh, being able to identify cars from their rear lights. Oh, that's a good game. What, while they're, while they're off? No, while they're, off, while the while they're, on while they're off the car. So what you're saying is, is you're good with a rear end. I am very, very good with a rear end. Um, so yeah, mum's always encouraged me. Uh, my dad as well, I, I don't know my dad, but he apparently is, was... Uh, some sort of mechanic. I think he had a Range Rover Classic or so. There oh, is a good man choice. pissing against oh. a very large pole. I'm not surprised because you have to pay for all the toilets yeah. around it. And so there's also a man pissing there. Oh, well. yeah, there's a man pissing there. Right everyone is pissing. Oh, look, he's just started. Look at his oh, street. Oh, 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 he needs to drink oh, a bit right. more water. Oh, God, put your gut away, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, sorry. We've just, we've just, for everyone listening, we've just pulled into a uh, services in down? Belgium to a breakdown, switch off, switch on, and then reset the uh, suspension. Uh, you are clear. Fantastic. So, yeah, um, always love cars. Mum helped develop that. And yeah, so mum always used to have interesting cars as well. So mum is German and her first car was a Carmen Gear. Oh, really? Yeah, which is a very interesting, quirky, rare, and quite luxurious sporty car for a first car. I think when she was 19 or so, she had that. Aren't they worth quite a lot of money now? Uh, yeah, they're worth quite a decent amount, aren't Probably, they? Especially yeah. in good condition. Yeah, but um, mum was on the motorway and then all of a sudden the traffic stopped and then a few cars piled right into the into the rear of the car. And she was actually in hospital for a couple of months with double vision, nearly lost her legs, blah, blah, blah. Gosh. Gosh. So um, yeah, she, she's got a quirky car history. She's also owned a 944, the E21 that I mentioned. 
an old Granada that was shit, and then the um, <coughs> excuse me, automatic gearbox blew up in Germany. Um, so yeah, mum's into cars. That's probably the easiest way to say. What? Because yeah. mum likes cars, and mum would really still like a uh, a Porsche 911. What car did she have when you were a child that you remember the most? What was that? The most was the E twenty one. It was the three one six left hand drive with a massive hole uh, in the passenger footwell. Brilliant. Yeah. This podcast is proudly sponsored by Tire Streets UK. If you want to get ten percent off your tires, then use the code Auto Alex. We use Tire Streets for all of our cars, and so should you. Ten percent off using the code Auto Alex. Josh, who is our resident mechanic, who is currently driving Big Pete on our way to the Nürburgring. We were having a chat yesterday and um, your story is a little bit different to mine, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I was a late bloomer. I didn't really... So my first car was a Peugeot 106, bog standard, everyone's first car. And then I'd, I found out what a Peugeot 205 GTI was. And this was back when you could buy 205 GTIs for what? What were they, like a grand maybe? Back then, we're talking 2007, 2008. Jesus. I thought they were still that price today. No, they're, they're, <laughs> they're like. You got one for sale? Is that, is that you got one for No, sale? I've got one. It's not for sale. So I, I did a straight swap for my Peugeot 106 to a Peugeot 205 GTI, and it was cheaper to insure than the 106. Wow. Which, it was only 1.6. But that was my kind of first ticker with a nice car. And then I, I met a guy when I was doing photography, and he was like, come along to this car club. So I knew nothing of what car clubs were or. There was a culture behind cars. I just thought they were vehicles. This is all I was my understanding of what a car was. Sorry, can I interrupt? What was that car club? Because it is uh, the biggest independent car club in the UK that many people might not know about. Outside of manufacturers. Yeah, so non-manufacturer specific, the Gay Classic Car Club is the biggest car club in the UK. Um, I don't know how many members they have, but yeah, it's the biggest. That is mental, isn't it? it? Is. That, that, that is the largest. And at the uh, NEC Classic Car Show, they have won Stand of the Year, I think, on the bounce for the last three years. Wow. wow. Really? They put a lot of effort in, yeah. And they've always got a really nice eclectic mix of cars. They've got a lot of Longbridge tat, but <laughs> they, they also have... Are you saying that they're all old? No, they just love Longbridge tat. Um, but they've got some of the, there's some lovely Mercs and Astons, Jaguars, along with, you know, cheap, there's some younger guys with just things you never see anymore, like Daihatsu Charades and... MG Metro Turbos. But yeah. So then at that point, uh, where did we go from there? My dad gave me his R50 Mini, standard Minge. Yeah. And then after that, I met a guy and he had a per, uh, E30 318 IS. That's oh, the first time I'd ever experienced an cars. E30. And I had a little passenger ride in that and was hooked instantly. That was my door into BMWs, into classic cars. Um, so yeah, after that, I bought myself an E30 318 Touring in sterling silver for Very 1,800 nice. pounds, which was the going rate for one of those back then. And what, had it four or five years? And then a learner driver crashed into it on the no. Aston Expressway. Yeah, wrote it off. Oh. The insurance rang me and said, hello, sir, yes. Uh, unfortunately, we're only going to be off offering you seven and a half thousand pounds. <laughs> I was like, sorry, what? Seven and a half thousand pounds. Oh, uh, uh, is that okay? Uh, yes, I, it cost me 1800 pounds. So yeah, it was written off, bought it back for 200 quid and then came a track car for a bit and then sold it and the rest is history now. Then went E39. Fantastic. Uh, and then I bought another five series. Now I've got an F11, same as Alex, with, I'm sorry, but the best number plate in the world. It is very cool. I just, I can't bring myself to get a personalised number plate. What is your personalised number plate, if you don't mind saying it? Uh, my F11 wagon has F11 WGN. That is good. It's that is very good. F11 wagon. So, yeah, speaking then, of this, actually, sorry. So, why, why haven't you got a personalised number plate yet, Alex? Well, part of the reason I don't have a personalised number plate is because I have my personal cars at my house. And if someone were to walk past and then see that car with a if, if it's a memorable number plate then people know where I live and I just but I don't I think just don't people want... are going to be check uh, like let's say your F11 for example yeah that's not a noticeable car that I don't think people I know would, but look, if, look, if just people it. stumble on it you just don't know who's walking past to be fair yeah if I knew where he lived I'd egg him you yeah, dig yeah. It. Oh, I that's why. That's yeah. why I always meet you at Beaconsfield Services. I yeah. don't want you to know where I live. <laughs> <laughs> but for example, for example, my um, Alfred, my yeah. one six four, there is a personalised number plate that I've been looking at, which is um, it, it pretty much says Busso on it or something like that. Yeah. 
and that's only like 250 quid so for a car that i don't use a lot that lives and sits um in the unit i would quite happily have that because it's just cool but for personal stuff i don't really want that also i have a tendency to to drive um uh, within all of the constraints of the law. I would one say, I would say aggressive. I no, was going a, to say aggressive. aggressive. No, aggressive. I would say, aggressive. see, whenever I'm on the phone to Rory and Alex is in the background <sighs> driving, all I can hear is swearing, shouting and aggressiveness. What are you on about? And there, I, there, I always there is say a, to you, he is hangry. His, his pet peeve the most is someone weaving around in the road yeah. and then when he gets alongside them and sees that they're on their phone oh I yeah. hate it oh he is all hell fuming. breaks loose. I am fuming he, he becomes the police officer I do so yeah. he wants to pull them over I and will. give them a slap butty oh, and tell oh, them off more than he, that. Gets, he gets so angry at him he just crashes into them <laughs> no they crash into me the amount no. of people that have oh, crashed into my trailer. <laughs> he Sorry, says this, Woodford. Rory, people but I've keep never seen in. any evidence of no. it. He just sends pictures and goes, this man's just crashed into me. <laughs> but I think it's another the other day, way around. And he just up. tries to cover it up. Well, how no, can it's, you not it's see London. a trailer? It's London. <laughs> I know. How can you not see a trailer, especially when know. Phil's on it, Everyone and then an Uber the driver trailer. decides to drive the into it? The last time someone crashed into it. Don't you crashed into it with your... They had a car on the trailer and someone tried to... Change lane yes, and apparently on a roundabout. didn't see his trailer. I think well, that's I a know, load of I, I, I think I actually heard Alex utter the words, "This will teach them," and then, <laughs> then crushing. <laughs> this will <laughs> <this'll> have them. <laughs> I was so angry with that Uber driver that the, the first thing that came out of my mouth was, "Are you on effing crack?" <laughs> <laughs> I'd then, love to And have then seen he blamed that. me, and I was like, "What are you on about? You just crashed into me." I'm getting. Very, very angry. <laughs> I'm very disgruntled. And he's had a sandwich this morning. Oh, I have. Yeah, I have. He's not even angry. Angry. So anyway, that is a little introduction to uh, to Josh, our resident mechanic. So you were a little bit of a late bloomer yeah. when it came to loving cars. Yeah, probably 22, and then was when I started my apprenticeship at Jaguar. So yeah, the, uh, my, my parents never had interest in cars. I vaguely remember an Austin Montego in Pooh Brown. Oh my, that my goodness! Dad. Oh. It was horrible. That, and then he had a Volvo. What's the small diddy one? 340? Uh, yeah, 340. Yeah. Two, yeah. yeah. Or is that, it 240? 240. Whatever yeah. it is. That. Uh, so, yeah, never really had very interesting cars. My mom had a Micra and then a Micra <laughs> and then a Corsa. So, yeah, no, nothing exciting or. Do you know what amazes me, though, about you, Josh? You have now become this absolute. Like, I know it's obviously not your day job and I know you're, yeah, yeah. You're, you are more of an engineer, but. But. Y- your mechanical but, knowledge is insane. Like you are very, very good at fixing things. I, I, I'm very a bit like good. a sponge. I, if if I want to fix something, I have to go and look at it up and research it. And but I've got, I've got, I've had a. When I go for jobs, I have this problem that people look at my CV and go, "What do you actually do?" And I'm like, "I don't really know." Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started at Jaguar Land Rover testing cars. I used to be that guy that used to crash cars for fun testing all the silly things that people would do with cars like putting bike racks on the roof going over humpback bridges smacking them into curbs that sounds fun that's a yeah, job that, that's a job yeah um and then i left that to work for a startup and then and then i kind of i missed the that's the whole reason i volunteered to work with you lot because i just miss playing about with cars you, you know they're all the I, I don't i don't value more expensive cars to be better or cheaper cars to be better cars are cars to me you know they bring people together, whatever they are. And that's the bit I enjoy about cars. That's fantastic. What a lovely sentiment. That is nice. It's good that we don't pay him either as well, because he'd no, probably no. be very expensive. I, I pay him. I know, I'm joking. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, cool. What about you, Rory? What got you into cars? I would probably say it would have to be my dad. Um, my, yeah, my dad is a, a massive card nut, mainly of the classic car. And right. your dad's got a few nice motors. A few, he? A, a few, a few. Yeah, he's a got few. quite the collection. Do you know dad. what? I, I saw a comment the other day, which was hilarious. Which was, uh, <laughs> what was it? It was something like, "Is is Rory's dad just really rich and then just bankrolls the whole of Auto Alex? Because that must be the only <laughs> reason that Alex still keeps him on. Because I, I can't think of another reason. <laughs> <laughs> I can't that either. Was, to be fair, that was actually that was actually written by your dad. <laughs> 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 my dad and mom split up, so I didn't spend a lot of time with my dad when I was younger. But what, the time that I did was usually revolved around cars. It would be usually going on some sort of like road trip or doing something, or him showing me off his latest purchase of car. Um, and yeah, I, I just always, I think ever since then, I've always been into cars. 
And then especially since working at... I, I wouldn't say my knowledge of cars was that great. Um, but then, yeah, from working at Car For All uh, previously and then now here. Yeah, it's it's amazing how much you absorb. But yeah, I, I'd say mine was mainly mainly through through my, my dad. Yeah, But I, I, well, I just... The, the thing is, I think there's a lot of parents who... They're quite happy for their kids to get into cars and everything like that because it's 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 not a bad thing to be into really it's, it's, it's a great it, thing to be it's, into. it's a good community spirit i feel like a lot of a lot of car people are willing to help each other out go the extra mile like you know it's i think it is just a, it's a great community yeah it is a it really is a good community. fantastic community yeah. and, and like josh said i think that one of the best things about cars is everyone coming together making great memories like we do when we go to the Nürburgring, having a great time. And yeah, I think that's what it's all about. Taylor, where does your love of cars come from? Well, I think you were right in what you said. A lot of the time you're sort of born with it. If your parents are into cars, I think from a young age, you sort of naturally become into cars. Yeah. Um, again, I don't know my dad. My dad left when I was a very young age, uh, split up with my mum. Um, but my mum was always very into cars. My dad was really into cars too. He used to be a mechanic. He used to build a lot of Do cars. Do we have the same dad? Um, <laughs> is it Mike Brewer? No, it, it could be dad? Mike Brewer. Um, to be honest, I think Tom Lemphel is more of a father figure to me. Oh, oh my oh, God. Me and Tom oh, Lemphel. There's a great bit where Tom and Taylor are in, in the Z3 going around the Nürburgring. And they look like father and son they do. They going do. out there. Yeah. And you got you got Tom going, all right, Taylor, calm, calm down a bit, calm down a bit. And then he's making these all sort of sounds. Yeah, and Taylor's yeah, yeah, just yeah. there going, Way! <laughs> <laughs> Go on, me, Tom! Oh, the flat boy! Oh, come on! Oh, God. But yeah, I mean, I gave Tom a lift back when we, when we got back to the UK from that trip. Yeah. And we literally... From the moment we got in the car to the moment we got out of it, just did not stop talking. Yeah. And I'd actually lost my voice by the end of the evening where we were just talking so much. And uh, yeah, he's, he's great. I love he Tom. He's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got but, a lot of time for Tom. And he's, yeah. he's also got a lot of time for us, which yeah. is really yeah, nice. Yeah, 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 definitely. But, um, but yeah, I'm, as I say, I didn't know my dad. Um, I still don't. I'm not in contact with him at all. But he was very into cars. He was a mechanic, et cetera, et cetera. Um, had a speedboat as well, which is, I think, why... He had why a speedboat? Is yeah. that why you're what? desperate to get a speedboat? I do, yeah. My dad used to have a speedboat. He also used to have motorbikes as well and stuff like that. And he used to tow his speedboat with a Jeep Cherokee. No. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, that is cool. a bright yellow speedboat. It's really cool. I've got a picture of it in my pants drawer somewhere. <laughs> um, but, yeah, also, my mum has always been into cars. So when I was really young, um, I actually still remember the smell of the leather. She had a red E30 convertible. Oh, um, cool. And that's one of the cars I remember the most. I would say it's on par with the other car that I remember the most that she had, which was a Peugeot 306 XSI, oh. two-door, uh, phase one, and it had the square fog lights in the bumpers, and I, it was blue. And I actually remember the day she bought it, I was really, really excited. And yeah. I, I remember she picked me up from school and I said, have you got the new car? And she went, yeah, it's outside. And I remember running outside into the car park and there it was, this little oh, two-door XSI. And it was really, really cool. I absolutely loved it. And then she had that for quite a while. Um, and she, you know, she went through a bit of financial hardship and she sold it. And I was really, really gutted when she sold it. And she bought probably my most hated car in the world. And I absolutely hated it. And, uh, oh, it. no. She didn't have a, a Nissan, did she? No, she didn't have a Nissan. Did she have a no, PT no. Cruiser? She used to pick me up from secondary school in it. And I hated it so much that I used to ask her to park up the road. What yeah. car and was it? It was a 2003 Vauxhall Corsa Life 1 litre 3 cylinder. Oh. What did you get with the Life package? That is Absolutely nothing. It had electric <laughs> windows, no air con, it had plastic bumpers, it was silver, it had plastic wheels, and I absolutely hated it. We know what to buy, Taylor. No. A Vauxhall Life. If you We're going to buy a Vauxhall, one. If you buy me a Vauxhall Life. What year Life, was it? It was a 53 play. Um, anyway, that's a little bit of insight into us, isn't it? About how we got into cars, why we love cars. Some later bloomers than others, but here we are. Uh, you, Even though you are a later bloomer, your mechanical knowledge is probably better than all of ours put together. No offense, Taylor, but Josh is better. I, I would happen happily disagree with you there. Okay, all okay. right. And on that note, uh, shall we move it on? <laughs> <laughs> 